Hello everyone, Zero Kimchi here with another test unit review. This time Ayaneo opted for a retro inspired design to evoke nostalgia, all the while incorporating modern technology and performance, not to mention their usual sleek and premium feel in a vertical format, the Ayaneo Pocket DMG. Let's talk a little bit about specs. This device sports a 3.92 inch OLED screen of which renders at 1240 by 1080p and max 60Hz refresh rate, which is an aspect ratio of approximately 1.5 to 1. This means it is perfect for vertical retro emulations such as NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Genesis, Dreamcast and so on. Emulation of consoles such as GBA, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, GameCube and Wii with a standard ratio of 4 to 3 will also be fine. But since they're slightly wider than tall, you will get black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. With more modern emulation with a 16 to 9 ratio, it won't be that great of an experience. It will have huge black bars that will be in the way of a pleasant experience. However, PC games on WinLayer is a hit and miss. There will be games that support the device's native resolution as you can see here with Dark Souls Remastered and Lies of P. Just like the Ayaneo Pocket S, this device sports the current top-of-the-line GPU in Android handhelds, the G3X Generation 2 with a performance cap of 15 watts and the Adreno A32 GPU, which has proven to me to be the best in compatibility for emulation so far. So if you've seen my gameplay videos, you'll know this device means business. This model right here has 16 gigs LPDDR5X RAM and 512 gigs UFS 4.0 storage. There are four models, 8 gigs and 128 gigs of storage with UFS 3.1. 12 gigs and 256 gigs of which is the start point for UFS 4.0. Then there is 16 gigs RAM with 512 gigs storage and one with 16 gigs RAM with 1 terabyte of storage. It's got a beefy battery of 6k mAh. On the highest power draw and highest profile, you could get about 3 hours of playtime. However, if you are mostly playing retro, expect it to be double of that, even triple the hours if you play the lightest retro emulation which plays fine on the power saving profile. Furthermore, it has an active cooling system with a larger cooling surface than that of the Pocket S. It has a single medium hall sensing analog stick and a trackpad. Now let me show you all the facilities of this device. On the front, the Ayaneo Pocket DMG boasts an impressive display bordered by a sleek bezel. Below the screen you will find a directional D-pad, face buttons, a single left analog stick and a touchpad on the right that functions as both the right stick and right thumb button. The start, select and the Ayaneo button conveniently located for easy access to the Ayaneo panel. On the right side of the device there is a huge speaker, two functions buttons, the power button and an SD card slot. The left side features another large speaker two more function buttons, a customizable volume rocker, and the profile switcher. At the top, you will notice a large air vent grill, while the bottom is equipped with a full-featured USB 3.2 port with DisplayPort 1.4 support. On the back of the device, the air intake grill is positioned at the top, and just below it is a strip of triggers designed to provide comfortable resting spots for your index fingers. Now with the design out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the controls. The D-pad is notably large and shallow, with minimal travel, it has really soft feel but a firm pivot point in the middle, which makes it highly responsive and easy to roll around. The input quality is excellent with no false diagonals and it's easy to hit diagonals when desired. This is a great D-pad. The buttons are also very shallow and have very little travel. They are easy to press and feel great for gaming. The most notable thing to me with all the buttons is that there is no clickiness. There is no loud click clack click clack, you know what I mean. It's all soft and quiet, which is absolutely 
fantastic. It's great that Ioneo seems to incorporate them across all devices now. It's the same for the Pocket S and the Micro. I don't know what it is with the alternatives or people who like clicky buttons in general. Like seriously, if I'm traveling, like commuting or something, I might as well just announce loudly that I'm about to play games. It's so awkward to have clicky loud ass buttons. <laughs> Moving on. The left analog stick is snappy. All good here. The touchpad which behaves as the right analog stick is pretty great. Works great on third-person action games that require a lot of camera panning. However, for shooter games, it's a challenging situation. While it behaves like an analog stick in that the camera will continue to turn as long as you hold down the input at its maximum threshold, it lacks the tactile feedback of reaching the maximum. This absence of feedback can cause you to inadvertently keep sliding your thumb to the side. It might be something to get used to. I know some people could. The trigger strip will also require some acclimation. Unlike other devices or controllers, it often feels like you are extending your index fingers towards the center, rather than slightly moving them vertically. This extension can feel less natural opposed to displacing your fingers. However, this design choice was likely driven by design constraints, considering the design format of the device. Before concluding this video, there's an important factor I'd like to highlight. Many users will likely appreciate that the heat buildup in this device primarily occurs at the top, just below the screen. This design ensures that you won't feel any heat during gameplay. However, it's worth noting that when running intensive titles with heavy emulations such as Winlater, the screen can become quite hot. Hopefully this won't lead to any long-term issues. Right. Let's talk about pricing. So the base model sets you back at $342. The second model, remember, with the UFS 4.0, $423. Then the third one, $402. These are all early bird discounted. Then the last tier, which is basically the third tier, but with one terabyte of storage and Game Boy themed, is not discounted by early birth. I hear you now, it's top money. However, do mind that there is much more to this device than what you see on the surface. You are not just paying for the beefy hardware and sleek design. A lot of software integration has been put into this device as well. Not only that, software support has been incredible with Ioneo. Ever since I received my Pocket S, it's been updated at least once or twice per week. The same with the Pocket Micro. I expect the same with this device. Finally, they also listen to the gamers. A lot of bug fixes and suggested features have been introduced pretty quickly. All things considered, I believe this device is worth the investment. However, it's essential to evaluate which tier aligns best with your gaming habits. This device is perfect for nostalgic gamers looking to own a premium gadget for their retro gaming needs. More importantly, it caters to anyone who doesn't want to be restricted to retro gaming and prefers to have options for modern gaming as well. After all, who knows what the next emulator will bring, right? And that's it for this video. This was my first attempt at a full review for a device. Thanks for sticking around till the end. That really means a lot to me. I hope this was informative and enjoyable. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be a gameplay showcase with this device. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. See you next time.